In this presentation, we'll look at, at one of the most important areas of switching, and that is the usage of the Span and Tree Protocol, or STP. Basically, the main concept that we have with the Span and Tree Protocol is the concept of a bridge. And uh, the main objective of a bridge is to learn the, m the MAC addresses on either side of the bridge so that when a source machine sends to a, a destination which is on another port of the bridge, it will automatically forward it through. As far as, as, far as the machines know, the bridge is transparent in that the machines on either side of the bridge appear to be on the same local network. So that means that an ARP packet sent by one machine will be sent to others on the other side of the bridge. And there is now a standard called the 802.1d. And the advantage of a bridge is that it avoids loops and that bridges intercommunicate and find the best route to a destination. It also learns the stations on either sides of bridges and is able to filter based purely on layer 2 MAC addresses. So in this case we have a bridging table. The bridging table has added that on port 1 there are two machines, MAC 1 and MAC address 2 and on the other side on port 2 there is MAC 3 and MAC 4. When this machine wants to, wants to send a data frame to this machine it sends its destination MAC address which it should have already discovered through an ARP request. So the data frame is sent and the bridge picks up the data frame and forwards it to the next port, doesn't change any of the, the details of the data frame and then forwards that directly. No other machine apart from the two which, which are involved in the communications should be able to see the communications. As it is a switch network we can have multiple communications at any given time. But the bridge itself will only allow one communication at a time of course. So on a switch a switch adopts this idea and has what's called CEM or content addressable memory. We hardly ever see bridges as part of networks now and normally what we use is a switch. In this case the switch, we have a switch which connects the two machines on either side and then we have an interconnected switch which is connected through two ports and it's now up to the switch to identify the nodes on either side and learn their addresses. So in this case, its CEM table has MAC1 and MAC2 from port 1 and MAC3 and MAC4 on the other port. The switch will then forward the data frames across between ports. At any point we can look at the CEM table with the show MAC address table dynamic and dynamic means the ports, the, the MAC addresses of the, of the nodes that it's actually learnt. So in this case it can assign them to VLANs. So we can see here that uh, on the ports we have three addresses learnt on uh, the gigabit 02 interface and these have been learnt dynamically. These identify the MAC addresses and these identify the VLANs. It is important that a switch does not forward a data frame from another VLAN for security reasons. Thus it will only forward based on the, the VLAN which it is in and the destination MAC address. If it cannot match these two then it will not forward the data frame. 
A key concept is that machines obviously start, are, are connected and disconnected onto a network at a regular basis. So it is important that addresses are aged out and we typically have an aging process where all the MAC addresses have to be relearned after a certain amount of time. So we can see in this case once MAC2 has been aged out because the node isn't connected anymore it will eventually be deleted from the CEM or aged out. An extremely important part of the Span and Tree protocol is to make sure that we do not have multiple routes to between a source and a destination. In this case, we've created a backup route between each switch, just in case the uh, the switch one of the switches becomes inoperable. So you can see here that uh, we could go from Mac three to the other Mac three on the other side via this route, or we could go via this route here. So there are now multiple routes. So it is up to the spanning tree protocol to decide which route is the most efficient based on certain parameters. In this way, we can set uh, set the complete picture for the whole network up so that there are, is only one route to a uh, destination. As we'll see, at this layer here, we typically have redundancy uh, built into it. The access layer is less important, but at the distribution layer, we typically have redundancy. So the span entry protocol must analyze the routes and decide the best one. Then all the switches are kept up to date on the optimal routes. The way that the span entry protocol works to be able to get this coherent picture of the network is to send what are called BPDUs or bridge protocol data units. And these are typically seen as broadcasts into the network and advertise when there is a change in the topology, such as a new connection or a connection being deleted. The main objective is obviously to detect and eliminate loops, to hopefully detect where there are faults and to find alternative routes and to fine-tune the network performance and finding optimal routes. So when a new route is, a new machine is added or a, a a new switch is added to it, or where we have different switch cost ports, a BPDU is sent. When this happens, when an update is sent, certain ports can be set into either blocking phase or a forwarding phase, and that can stop data from being transmitted into the, into the network. Some of the key terms that, that we have is that uh, we have a concept of a bridge identifier and that allows us to create a unique bridge ID. Typically it's the, it's the bridge ID priority and also one of its MAC addresses. It then uses this in an election process to find the switch which is seen to be the root of the the network. Each port themselves has a port priority and if there are multiple ports on the switch then uh, a port can, can be allocated as having a higher priority than another one. 